Okay, welcome back to our next video lesson. This is found in 3.2 of your textbook, and today we're going to learn about parallel lines and transversals. So in the previous lesson, we learned what a transversal is. A transversal in this diagram is this blue line T, and it's a line that intersects two coplanar lines at two different points. When we have two lines cut by a transversal, we learn that there are four angle relationships that occur and we learned what they were. We learned what corresponding angles were, consecutive interiors, alternate interiors, and alternate exteriors. And remember we had this example where we were asked to name all of the angles that are corresponding, alternate interiors, alternate exteriors, and consecutive interiors. And so we were able to do that. Okay. Now we're gonna take this lesson and we're gonna just tweak one little thing and something really special happens. So if you look at this, these two yellow lines okay, that are cut by the transversal, if we were to make these two yellow lines parallel, okay, so now these two yellow lines are parallel, and remember that the symbol for parallel in this diagram is this little arrowhead and this little arrowhead. That shows us that those two yellow lines are now parallel. When we make those two lines parallel, something really neat happens with these angle relationships, okay? So we can still name all of the angle relationships. They're all still the same as they were in the past, okay? But what happens is all of the corresponding angles are congruent, all the alternate interior angles are congruent, all the alternate exterior angles are congruent, and the consecutive interiors are supplementary, okay? So for example, corresponding angles, we have one corresponds to five. Those are now congruent. Two corresponds with six. Those are congruent. Three and seven, four and eight. Those are all congruent, okay? Alternate interior angles are also congruent. So two and seven, four and five. Alternate exteriors, one and eight, three and six. And then finally, consecutive interior angles. Remember, those are same side interior. So if you look at four and seven, do those look congruent? No, you can see that four is obtuse and seven is not obtuse, it's acute. So those are not congruent, but consecutive interiors are supplementary, which means that their measures add up to 180 degrees. So here are the four theorems that summarize what we just learned. Okay, so the corresponding angles theorem, alternate interior angles theorem, alternate exterior angles theorem, and consecutive interior angles theorem. Okay, th those just let us conclude that the two angles are um, congruent or supplementary, depending on which type of angle we have. Okay, notice that the if statement in all of these is if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. Okay, you learned in the previous chapter that these are conditional statements, right? So the P is if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, the Q is whatever we conclude, congruency, or in this case, supplementariness, okay? Okay, so here we have two parallel lines cut by transversal. And the best thing to do at this point is just do a whole bunch of examples where we utilize these four theorems and um, we solve some problems. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we have a diagram with two parallel lines cut by a transversal. We know that these two lines are parallel because of this red arrowhead and this red arrowhead. Okay, and so the question states, the measures of three of the numbered angles are 120 degrees. Identify the angles, explain your reasoning. Now we're already given that one of the angles right here is measures 120 degrees. So when this says three of the numbered angles, it's talking about these numbered angles, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, because four of them in total are gonna to be 120 degrees, but three of the numbered angles. So which one of them, which ones of those are 120 degrees? And also we have to explain our reasoning. So our answer has to have two parts, it has to identify the angle and also explain why or justify it, right? So by the alternate exterior angles theorem, we know that 120 degrees and eight, the measure of angle eight and, and angle eight, those two are alternate exteriors. So we know that their um, angles are, those two angles are congruent. So their measures equal each other. So the measure of angle eight is equal to 120 degrees. See if you can identify the other two. Okay, if you look at five and eight, 
five and eight are vertical angles. And remember that we learned that vertical angles, no matter where we find them, vertical angles are always congruent. So if the measure of angle eight is equal to 120 degrees, we also know that the measure of five is also 120 degrees. Is there a different explanation that you could have used to get angle five? Yeah, 120 degrees, this angle and angle five are sitting in corresponding positions. So you could have just used the corresponding angle theorem. Okay, and then what is the final angle that um, is also has a measure of 120 degrees? It's angle four, okay? These two are vertical angles, okay? So we know that um, vertical angles are always congruent, so the measure of angle four is also equal to 120 degrees. Or what the author of the textbook used was AIA, alternate interior angles, okay? The author recognized that angle four and angle five are alternate interior angles, okay? And we have a situation where we have two parallel lines cut by transversal. So AIAs, alternate interiors, are congruent. So the measure of angle four is equal to 120 degrees. Okay, next example. The measures of three of the numbered angles now are 75 degrees. Find them and explain why. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute. Um, go ahead and um, pause the video and see if you can figure out what each one of those is. Okay, here we go. So some of your reasons might be different than mine, and that's perfectly okay. So I started by going with vertical angles. I went from 75 degrees to angle two. We know that those are vertical, therefore they are congruent. Okay, and we know that congruent um, angles have the same measure. I then went to angle six, okay, and you can see that two and six are corresponding, so corresponding would have worked, or what I used was alternate interiors. I used the original 75 degrees and angle six. Those are alternate interior angles, therefore they are congruent, therefore their measures must be equal. And then the measure of angle seven. Okay, you can see that 75 degrees and angle seven are corresponding angles, okay? And so that's what I used. So again, there are your answers. So now we're asked to find the value of x. So let's throw a little algebra in there. So now we have two parallel lines kept by transversal. We're asked to find the value of x. Well, here's x right here. And then we have this measurement of this angle is given to us as 115 degrees. And the authors have given us a big sort of clue here. They've said, well, here's angle four. So they're telling us use angle four to solve this problem somehow, okay? And why do we need to use angle four or another angle? Well, that is because if you look at this angle that measures 115 degrees and this angle here, x plus five, we don't have a name for that angle relationship, okay? This is an exterior angle. This is an interior angle we don't have a direct relationship. So we're gonna link these two angles through a third angle. And in this case, we're using angle four. We could have used any of the angles, but we decided to go ahead and use angle four. So we know that angle four and this angle have to be congruent because they're vertical angles. Therefore, the measure of angle four equals 115 degrees. And then what do we know about angle four and x plus five? Well, those are consecutive interior angles, so they must be supplementary, okay? Which means that 115, we know that this is now 115, 115 degrees plus x plus five degrees is equal to 180 degrees. That's because those two are consecutive interior angles. And notice that I abbreviated vertical angle theorem as VAT, capital V, capital A, capital T. That is perfectly acceptable to do. I think that all of your teachers will be fine with that. Um, same thing with consecutive interior angles, CIA. Okay, that works for consecutive interior angles. Corresponding, there's not really, a, we don't really just put CA. That's not really that you know, clear what that means. So corresponding, we usually just abbreviate as C-O-R-R-E-S period. Okay. Anyways, getting back to this problem, 
Okay, so now we're just going to solve for x. So we're going to subtract the 115 from both sides of the equation. Okay, so we have x plus 5 equals 65. We subtract the 5 from both sides of the equation, and we're left with x equals 60. Go back and read the question. Did we answer the question? Yes, we did. Okay, and it's always a good idea, although most of the geometry teachers are not going to require this, unless we also probably teach algebra or algebra 2. Um, we're not going to require you to check this answer, but it's a good practice. I think your Algebra 1 teachers taught you always check your answers. So plug this back in um, 60 plus 5 does 60 plus 5, which is 65. Does 65 plus 115 equal 180? Yes, it does. Okay, so before we move on with the last couple examples, I want you to identify a pattern. And that's something that is... Um, you know, part of mathematics, part of really good mathematics is recognizing patterns. And um, you guys learned and studied inductive and deductive reasoning in the previous chapter. So I want you to look at what the pattern is, okay? So what do you notice about all the angles? So you have, here we have a diagram of two parallel lines, line A and line B. They're cut by a transversal. We know that they're parallel because of this red arrowhead, okay? What is the pattern that emerges among all eight angles? Okay, well, I'll give you a clue if you haven't figured it out yet. Four of them are blank, and four of them are blank. Okay, four of those angles are acute, and four of them are obtuse. So here, this angle here, it's unnamed, unnumbered, but we have obtuse, acute, obtuse, acute obtuse, acute, obtuse, acute. Okay, well, what do you know about all of the obtuse angles and all of the acute angles? All of the acute angles are congruent to each other. And all of the obtuse angles are congruent to each other. Okay, so these four acute angles, they are all congruent to each other. And the four obtuse angles, same thing. So this clue will really speed up your process in solving these types of problems when you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So let's use this for our next example, okay? Here's our next example. We have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. Okay, we have two x degrees and 120 degrees. We're asked to find the value of x. Now, we could link these two angles through a third angle because these two angles don't have a direct angle pair relationship name. We have an interior acute angle and an exterior obtuse angle. But using the clue I just taught you, we know that all of the acute angles are congruent and all of the obtuse angles are congruent. We also know that if you have one acute angle, like this one acute angle, and one obtuse angle, those two angles are going to be supplementary. So if they're supplementary, we know that 2x degrees plus 120 degrees equals 180 degrees. Subtracting the 120, we get 2x equals 60. And then dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we get that x equals 30. Let's plug that back into x. 30 times 2 is 60. So is 60 degrees and 120 degrees, are those two supplementary? Yes, they are. Okay, now let's find the value of y. So we have 6y minus 3, and then we have 129, okay? Notice that this is obtuse, and this is also obtuse. So remember the clue I taught you was that all of the obtuse angles are congruent to each other, all of the acute angles are congruent to each other. So what's the equation we could write? 6y minus 3 equals 129. Add 3 to both sides. Divide by 6, voila, y equals 22. All right, guys, that's all we have for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, please enjoy your practice problems.